it's a great honor to be here to share some ideas with everybody. And uh, also, uh, uh, my daughter graduated from the family here, so I'll oh. oh, sorry from that. <laughs> so, uh, I have a great team. Uh, thank you all. <laughs> And, uh, okay, uh, today's talk is about uh, engaging aiding in inward imperialism and the construction of the Great Wall on the true borderland. Uh, we know in recent decades, scholars, I'm fully equipped here, so uh, <laughs> this is the clicker, this is the pointer, and there are two microphones. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, in recent decades, scholars from uh, have expressed strong interest in understanding modern China's identity in terms of ethnic components and the nation's status, and to assess the historical process of nation building in a highly dominated contemporary China. Scholars often trace it back to the Ming Dynasty, which is from 1368 to 1644. Um, which is the last high ruling house that recovered the central land from centuries of uh, foreign rule. Uh, indeed, the Ming Dynasty's special position in modern Chinese history is in dispute. After toppling the conquest of Mongol regime, the Ming engaged in a series of social cultural reform to reorientate the values and reinstitute the social political order. And we have a, a number of uh, Prominent scholars working on the on the Korean South or working on the Ming, uh, including some scholars in other fields, like uh, Mark Elliott uh, in Qing history and uh, uh, Liu Xin in Ming history, uh, Peter Bolt in Song history, and Edward Farmer in Ming history. So we have the uh, prominent scholars pointing the significance of the Ming Dynasty in the formation of a modern China identity. Uh, at the same time, however, when scholars uh, look at the construction of China and the empire during the Ming times, uh, they tend to um, misinterpret its nature and its historical process. I think, uh, which one? Okay, this one. All right, uh, this is uh, uh, some of the points I, I want to talk about today. Uh, we're going to uh, have a brief introduction, then look at the China. Uh, China discourse. China here, I, okay, whenever I say China underline, they refer to Dongwu, and the Chinese phrase, phrase of Dongwu. Um, in the meantime, and the Miao territory, the large China platform, and uh, the Great Wall and the True Water Lane, and the Ming inward in tourism and conclusion. So this is the topic. And uh, so, scholars tend to misinterpret the, the, uh, the construction of China, Dongwu, and the empire uh, during Ming times. Um, there's uh, several problems here. The first is the uh, uh, pursuing a monolithic social, ethno cultural identity of the Ming empire, and the use as a the analytical um, and uh, uh, epistemological other to attest to other scholarly claims. So that's the one problem. The second problem is tend to equate Ming Empire to Zhongwu, uh, China. Uh, and the third problem is to assume, to assume the political unity of the Ming Empire, in, so in the so-called China proper. So those are some of the uh, scholarly, I think, uh, misconception of the Ming Dynasty, uh, which I'm going to deal with in this talk is by using an example of the, uh, of the uh, Great Wall of the True Order. All right, and uh, uh, now in terms of the settings here, uh, the focus here is the Miao territory, okay, Miao territory in the Ming Dynasty. And uh, in the Ming time, in, in the Ming Dynasty, that is uh, west of Huguang province, east of Guizhou province, and the southeast of Sichuan province. Now in presently China, it's the west of Hunan and Xiangxi, uh, east of Guizhou, and the southeast of Chongqing. So that is a, uh, the, the, the geographical uh, location. And uh, I engaged, in recent years, I engaged some field work in Fenghuang County in Xiangxi and uh, Songtao County in East Guizhou. So visited the Miao, some sites of the Southern Great Wall, and also the Miao communities. So that's the, uh, gonna, so in today's talk, I'm gonna draw some of uh, my research for a field of uh, 
pure work of findings and also uh, historical text to look at uh, uh, the issues. Now, in terms of uh, the location of here, this is the uh, map of the Ming Empire. And uh, so here we have the Wuhan province in central, uh, south central China. And Ming Dynasty. This is the Guizhou, this is Yunnan. Uh, so this is a Miao this is a Miao territory is this border region of three provinces in Europe. So Wuhan, Guizhou, and uh, Sichuan. So that's the, the, the traditional uh, Miao territory. Uh, look at the map of uh, present-day China. This is the Hunan province. This is the Hunan province. And then this is the Xiangxi prefecture. So Fenghuang County, the county I visited is, is here. And then Songtao is here. So basically I visited uh, this place. In the uh, part of this. this is the ce center of the traditional Miao territory. Again, uh, this is the one I map. This is the Feng, Fenghuang, uh, map of Fenghuang County. So this is Songtao. And, uh, the traditional wall goes this way. The route goes this way. Okay, so we'll show you later. So the scene of Fung Huang City right now, which is a reconstructed, uh, restored this is the gate, uh, the east gate, in the, this the bridge. This is the Mel Village. Show the evidence. <laughs> Indeed. All right. Okay. Uh, the, the first issue I'm going to talk a little bit here is the uh, Zhongguo Discourse in the Ming Times. The Zhongguo Discourse. Um, because this has a lot to do with the Ming perception of the nature of this uh, uh, empire and also the nature of the Miao territory. Now, Zhongguo, we, we currently we tend to, you know, we just use the China. Um, this phrase appeared as early as the 11th century BCE, the 11th or early Zhou uh, dynasty. And um, since then, the concept has developed into different uh, uh, meanings, uh, including the uh, capital city, the royal domain, uh, central plains, uh, political regimes, and ethno-cultural space. Now, during Ming times, I think Zhongguo, uh, basically it means uh, the place where the Han people live and the Han cultural practices. So that is basically my my argument here. And uh, now, in the scholarship, people tend to uh, misunderstand. I think uh, misinterpret or misunderstand this uh, uh, this meaning of Zhongguo uh, because when they look at uh, some of the quote called diplomatic documents. And uh, the main court will address this place as a dual world tour, like Japan, Korea, Vietnam, Hanai, or, or, or Chamba. So uh, then, you know, scholar tells, okay, let's look at it. That's what a dual world means. Dual world is equals the mean. A dual world is the place where mean empire is located. Things like that. Uh, but I think it's a, a mis, uh, uh, misinterpretation. So my basic argument here is that there are two. Uh, central elements that define Zhongguo. One is the Han ethnic people, another is the Han, uh, Han civilization. Okay. And uh, um, these two play, these two elements define Zhongguo as an ethno cultural space, uh, not a political, not a state, not a, a political uh, entity, but an ethno cultural space. This space uh, can be changed, expanded. Um, that's also the plan or the, the, the project of the main uh, uh, main uh, course is engaging in. And, um, but uh, you do have this line drawn between uh, Zhongguo and a and barbarian place. Okay. So here, this opposition is between Zhongguo and the barbarians. So now this is the uh, one point here. Um, as I said, you know, this has a lot to do with the uh, uh, the perception of, of the empire and the, and the, um, and the uh, Miao territory. So, based upon this consumption or, or this uh, um, uh, concept, then the Ming, um, the Ming ruling elite will not consider a uh, whole Ming empire as Zhongguo, only the quote-unquote civilized place as Zhongguo. So the Miao territory then 
is is a is not a civilized place, which is not a jungle thing. So now we look at the Miao territory as a large jungle platform. I call this a land beyond the pale of civilization. In Chinese, that is a Hua Wei. Hua Wei Yi. Now first look at the, the Miao. The Miao. Miao is a. Uh, it's called a Mon. We're often called a Mon outside China. And uh, people outside China, particularly Hmong people, uh, tend to use the Hmong uh, to replace the Miao. And they use it for uh, all the, uh, people uh, inside and outside, uh, inside and outside China. But inside China, uh, people, the Miao people, quote, quote, the Miao people accepted that official category. Uh, and uh, they tend not to think this as a pejorative term. You, but they have their own names of for themselves. But uh, in the, the public document, uh, uh, document they accepted this as one of the 55 uh, minority nationalities under the PRC. Of course, this 55 minority nationalities are the communist construct. And we have a scholars you know, uh, study this, uh, the process of, of this construction. So uh, the basic consists in the scholarly field, it's basically the Miao consists of diverse social groups. There's no such a single you know, group as the Miao. So maybe, at least probably in, in present day China now, uh, you at least you have three major groups. Okay, like uh, east, uh, west of Hunan and the east of Guizhou, that's the eastern end, that is, a, is the, uh, that's the eastern Miao. Um, people, they call them, uh, themselves as the Goshu. As the Goshu. Um, that's the eastern meal. And then you have southeast of Guizhou, that's another meal. Uh, uh, probably people call them Wu themselves. Um, and then you have Mo, uh, west of Guizhou, and then Yunnan. So, so at least you have three major groups that can, each of them can, can count as an ethnic group. Okay, so that is a um, scholarly consensus out of China about this ethnic. Uh, uh, ethnic uh, Group. Um, but in the meantime, it is also the term is used to include a, a number of people, uh, different kinds of people, including Luo Luo and the Ge Lo and the Miao and the Yao and, and sometimes the Dong. So you have different people uh, included in this category. And uh, according to their dress style, these people are, 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 are different, diverse people. They can, they can uh, be categorized as a, a red Miao. If they wear some kind of a red uh, a ribbon on the head or have the red ribbon here on uh, the wrist. And uh, uh, there's a white meal, uh, they wear, wear white dress or uh, flowery meal, okay, they have this uh, flowery uh, dress, things like that. So that's the, in the, in the Ming Dynasty, we see this text for this different people. Now, uh, for the Ming court, in terms of political, uh, Category. I think the most important for the Ming court is uh, cooked and raw. Okay. So that cooked and raw is most meaningful to them. So that, that is the dress style. And the dress style, of course, as a, as a mark of, as a present day understanding of ethnicity. But uh, this cooked and raw, this is, a, this is for their uh, political uh, status. Uh, because both cook and meow, they, they, they view them as meow. But uh, because they have different uh, political um, status, Political stance and a political, uh, and, and a political entity. So they are uh, divided into this kind of um, coconut meal. Now, in the, uh, so the coconut meal, mostly they are living with, the, say, uh, with the Han people, or they have they adopted the Han culture. Uh, and the raw meal, they would uh, uh, not just uh, you know, reject the Han culture influence, but also politically. They stay away from the uh, Chinese Han dominance or governance. So, it is a, a large uh, uh, in the uh, male territory at a large time platform is this uh, territory of the raw meal. Okay, that's the, you, you come to this, uh, this uh, category. All right, now this is raw, uh, this is uh, a place. All right, so let me just uh, uh, show you again <coughs> Specifically, where this uh, uh, meal territory, raw meal, quote, quote, raw meal territory is located. 
So this is the present day map, the red map of China. And uh, the, this military is located at the so-called Wulingshan Mountains. Okay, Wulingshan Mountains. Now Wulingshan Mountains, if you look at uh, this, Here it says Wulingshan. Okay, this is the Wulingshan. So uh, this is the Yunnan Guizhou Plateau. So Wulingshan is the eastern end of the plateau. And uh, this is the border region of Hunan, Hubei, Guizhou, and presently Chongqing, or traditionally Sichuan. So that's the part of Wulingshan. Wulingshan is a large, large mountain. Wulingshan, you can cons uh, it consists of probably, you can see, Three three sections, okay, divided by river systems. In uh, this wooding shine, it's a ghost of southwest to north, northeast. It's a stretch of about 400, 460, 460 uh, kilometers long. In uh, um, so again, this is the map of uh, the map of the 1930s uh, of Hubei, Hunan. So this is the Hubei, this is the Hunan. In the wooding shine here, it says. Wu in Shan. So we say the dark, uh, the dark is a broader area. Okay, so there's this. Uh, this is the Qing River in the present day Hubei. This is the Wujiang River in Guizhou. This is the Yu Yuan River in west of Huang, uh, west of Hunan, sorry. And then there's the Wu River here. This is the Huaihua City, <coughs> Wu River. So this is the Wuling, Wuling Shan Range, or Wuling Shan Range. Uh, uh, bordered by the four river system. Now we said that the three sections, so Qing River and the, and the uh, Yu River. Where's the Yu River? Okay. Uh, okay. This is the one section. Then from Yu River to Chen River, that's the second middle section. And then from Chen River to Wu River, this is the lower section. So different sections. Okay. Different sections. Uh, people said uh, pr at the present time uh, are homes of different ethnic groups. So in the upper part, Chu Jiazu is the main sort of group. And then the middle part, Miaozu. And then the lower part is uh, um, Dongzu or some other, other uh, ethnic groups. So we, now, the traditional, okay, the Miao territory, we talk about it here. I'll give you this, uh, closer, uh, closer look at this. Uh, a Qin River again. See, this is the uh, it's a uh, if we're talking about color than this, and uh, this is the Wu River, Yuan River, and the Wujiang River. Okay, this is the Yu River and the Chen River. So, this part is the uh, uh, traditional Miao territory. Now, in the Ming Dynasty, this is the, the historical map of the Ming. Ming uh, uh, Ming Dynasty map uh, together with the present day, present day um, uh, names. So, Hunan, uh, Huguang, and uh, Guizhou, and Sichuan. So, uh, what we see here is the middle section. This is the middle section. That's the middle territory. And this is the Lower Shan. Lower Shan. Lower Shan is named after the two large mountain, uh, two high mountain peaks in uh, in the Songtao area. And, and uh, uh, this is a sort of a it constitutes a, a independent platform. Um, the average uh, height is about uh, 800 meters above the sea level. And if you see here, I'm just saying that this is a uh, uh, Miao territory. But uh, what do we see? Why there's uh, some other places, uh, you know, outside the uh, large, large mountain, but it's still part of this Miao territory? Because this is the lower region. Look at some of this. Uh, um, uh, the height of this uh, place usually probably from 250 to 70, uh, two, from 250 to 700 meters above the sea level. This is about 800 level. So uh, the, the, the geography is very different. Uh, then um, this different geography, I would argue, you know, that will uh, facilitate the formation of different ethnic groups and, and also uh, different uh, uh, social political status. Okay, so this is the, uh, the Miao territory. Now, the main perception of this part is uh, one thing, definitely, that's not a part of Zhongbu. This is outside of China, go to China. 
because uh, you have a, a number of uh, mean officials and scholars describe how weird, how different, how foreign these people are. You can say their appearance is very different, and they, uh, uh, they practice a, a different uh, marriage system. For example, uh, there's a very famous custom called cross-cousin marriage. marriage. Okay, cross-cousin marriage. It's very popular. And you are still right now, people, sometimes people still practice that, which is against the state law. Okay. Um, and uh, uh, you have your own social institutions, okay, uh, your own uh, uh, social organizations, and uh, your own legal system, uh, things like that. So very different language. Uh, now, in addition to that, and the people say this is a very different part of the world, uh, because uh, you have a description of this, uh, how difficult and how different uh, the terrain and, and uh, uh, climate are. Uh, so here we'll probably bring in this sort of uh, environmental elements uh, in this area. And uh, I quote uh, just several uh, short uh, phrases here which are used to describe the terrain of this place. Okay. He says, uh, the large dam platform is a place of culture. 10,000 peaks rising one upon another with extreme dangers and difficulties. Anyway. Showing sheer uh, pre uh, precip uh, precip precipice? Okay, precipice. And uh, um, thank you. Uh, overhanging rocks, uh, ferocious and terrifying shapes, uh, bird trails and goat foot paths, thick forest and deep valleys, and uh, interconnected mountain caves. A place of total wilderness without any trace of human presence. That's the some of the phrases you can you can get from the mean mean uh, mean texts. Um, you you have some mean officials uh, who in, who are in charge of a, a, a leading this a military expedition into this area, and this describes the difficulties. Uh, it says one difficulty is a terrain feature, um, in the. Uh, um, it's, it's a very uh, dangerous to outsiders, uh, and uh, now this place, if you can look at it from outside, uh, from outside in, and uh, it's very dark. If you look uh, from uh, inside <coughs> outward, it's very bright. So in other words, I mean, outsiders they always in a place of danger, uh, in a position of danger. Um, and uh, the weather is also very rainy and uh, foggy. Um, One okay, or, uh, but uh, it's dangerous for our outsiders. And also, we have this um, diseases. You know, people the uh, people will come here uh, will probably uh, catch the malaria. People call this a male malaria. Okay, the social disease with the male people, more male malaria. And uh, they say the water is too cold. Uh, the outsiders, you know, if you go there, of course, by that time uh, you don't have a. a Good, uh, good uh, equipment or other things for, for logistic, logistical support. So the, when the outsiders come in, when you drink water, uh, your 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 uh, stomach uh, and uh, uh, your stomach gonna hurt badly uh, because it's too cold. Uh, you know, when I visit the meal area, my meal, my meal brother, he just bring this uh, water from this uh, uh, Greece. You know, it's just very pure. Of course, much better than our bottled water probably. It's very pure. He's drink this spring water from other. I did not. There, do it. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, so, I mean, that's the mean. Uh, I, I got influenced by the mean text, <laughs> but it's just uh, um, uh, uh, I know. Well, uh, every time I visit the back of you know, my home, my hometown there, uh, I would have some kind of a stomach problem. So uh, I, I, I tend not to do it. But anyway, so the local people are quite used to this environment, but outsiders is a very dangerous to outsiders, and. Um, um, one example here is called a uh, uh, Tianxin Mount. Tianxin Mount. Uh, I will show you here. Okay. Now, just show you some picture of the uh, of the platform um, of the of larger. You know, what do you see? This is looking through the restored Southern Wei Wall. Okay, looking at this uh, large platform. This is the Miao territory. Okay. So uh, that's the landscape. 
the Mial village is, you know, some of them are on the top of this uh, mountain and it's already you know, hiding this, uh, this mountain. This is a uh, very beautiful but also very dangerous uh, landscape. Uh, and a lot of uh, sinkholes and the caves are in this deep uh, valley or cliff. And uh, it's also very beautiful, like a Zhang Jiajie. But it's, uh, in order to show you, this is not a Zhang Jiajie. This is the full one. I just showed you. I, I was there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is the, this is the, okay, uh, in the full one. This is the, near a Huluping, near Huluping Township. Now, this is the, you know, just newly uh, constructed highway in this one. Very difficult to, to uh, travel. And this, uh, this highway was uh, not built until early 21st century. Just before this, you can imagine how you, how you can travel uh, here in this, in this region. Uh, and a lot of uh, uh, movies or TV dramas show this uh, uh, in the early 50s. The communist troops come here to, to sort of exterminate the bandits. Uh, <laughs> they cannot just uh, do things easily at this area. I mean, this land, again, this terrain will help them a lot gradient. This is the okay. um, interview this um, your um, friend. And uh, you see this, the Xiang, this is uh, the back. This is the Tianxin Mountain, uh, Tianxin Mountain, or Mount Tianxin, uh, Mount Tianxin. So this <coughs> is another picture here. So is that, Probably a couple of hundred, uh, uh, or a couple of hundred meters high in terms of the cliff. Just no place to climb, and the seven of this little. Okay, here. Okay, just this little place, a um, uh, uh, narrow path, and you can you can get to. You can get to here. Okay, you can climb it here, it's easy. And then about this, you just totally just rely on the bushes or some kind of a hanging stuff. Uh, <clears throat> I love this easy. <laughs> okay, so. Yeah, so you can just uh, climb here. Then um, one of my male brothers, um, you know, uh, the, the group people try to uh, invest this place for tourist uh, uh, business. They want to see if this people, it is possible to set up this business. People come here to visit, to open up this place for, you know, for economic reasons. So he did manage to climb on the top. Immediately he climbed here. He was scared almost to death. He says. How could I get down? <laughs> That's the first question uh, occurred to, to his mind. How could I get down? You know, he finally, I don't know how he how managed to get down. Then, at home, he said he had a nightmares for over one week. He just, you know, just, uh, we got this, oh, where, where, where am I now? So, uh, in the, so that's a difficult place. And uh, here you have a fountain. You have water coming. And so you have a land, you can, you can um, a till some land, it's a soil, okay, you can grow crops, you have the water, and uh, you, you used to also have a, a, a Buddhist, uh, not Buddhist, it's a religious temple, they wor wor worship their own local god. So it's a whole community can set up there. Mm -hmm. And it was indeed set up, uh, say, toward this uh, late uh, 18th century, uh, 1795, through uh, early 19th century, uh, 1806, there is a Miao rebellion in this area. This is a sort of a, uh, becomes a, 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 a one of the last bases for the Miao for the Miao uh, for the Miao people. And uh, so, you know, the Qing Dynasty used to have this kind of memory. That's the Qing portrait of the Tianxi Mountain. Tianxi Mountain. So uh, you know, very similar uh, this uh, this landscape. Anyway, so give you this example, just say you have a, a different world with a different <coughs> terrain, different climate, and different people. And the Ming could not do anything about it. Okay. Could not do anything about it. All right, so now for this, uh, um, for this uh, uh, Miao territory, uh, 
There's a problem for the for, for the mean people. Is a and this is a foggy uh, idea. This is what I try to show this. This is also the world of wild animals. Um, you have no mean text. You see, they're tiger, leopards. It's gonna be yeah. So uh, very dangerous animals to humans. Again, outsiders, you know, just coming to this place, you just cannot survive easily. Uh, here, the snake, I visited my my male brothers, uh, you know, uh, home, and uh, when came back to, to back home, we saw this big snake out uh, there, just very common, very common. Um, it's a cave. This cave has both uh, 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 geographical meaning and also uh, cultural meaning. Worship the cave as a, this is the place of uh, their gods. Uh, inside the cave, you know, you have you can give this the ladder uh, coming down, going up. This is the, this is the canoe here, little boat. So you have you can, you can roll a canoe inside the cave in the water system supporting it. Uh, this is all side streams. So uh, just to show you, this is a uh, place for uh, for the meow. And this is the defensive wall, oldest, oldest defensive wall. Uh, this is in Song Tao, Song Tao, the Xinjiang. Uh, this is called a um, Miao Wang Cheng. Uh, you have this, uh, a lot of, uh, uh, you call this loopholes, you can uh, shoot uh, from inside this. A lot of things in the wall. But this becomes, becomes <coughs> it's a, it's a, uh, now they call it Bagua, uh, Bagua uh, formation. Uh, yeah. This is the uh, um, uh, former headquarters of Miao King uh, in 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 Shenzhen, Shenzhen, uh, This is uh, a block house in in uh, in the village. All right. So you have this kind of uh, different place. Uh, the problem is how do you do it? And uh, the Miao, the, the Ming people, the, the Ming government feel kind of. Threats, a lot of threats from the male people because they will they will come, you know, they will know this place. They come to this place and they come out of the mountains, this loot, burning, and the damage, and they go back. So that's what you know what they do. And so the the, uh, uh, the in order to pacify this place, the Miao or the Ming sent several major military expeditions into this area, but they could not last very long. So the uh, the better solution for them is basically is to uh, to, to sort of defense, okay, set up a defense system. And uh, actually, you have uh, several uh, major Ming texts by the Ming generals in this area. They, they just uh, discuss all these possible solutions. Okay, um, and the one general lists the three major solutions. One is this uh, uh, the jump. It's a military expedition. Okay, it's attacking. So attacking, there are two kind of attacks. One is just the large troops, major operations. <coughs> just it, it won't work. Another, is, he called this a diao jiao. It's, it's a diao is a hawk, an eagle hawk attack. Just attacking this kind of a different of some just, just strategic uh, uh, positions. But he says it do not want to work either. Then another solution is appeasement. Just try to pacify them, give them good things, and then you know calm them down. He says, without military support, peace, peace means one word. So the best solution is, of course, is defense. Shou. Okay. The defense to him is the shou xian, just to defend the strategic positions for the places. And uh, so at first, those people set up this uh, uh, kind of barracks or, or sentry position, or posts, sentry posts. So uh, uh, at one point, uh, they built up up to 24, those kind of uh, Barracks surrounding this area, by this area, um, but uh, it won't last very long. So uh, then, in the uh, mid 1550s, uh, some generals came up with this idea of we have this wall. That's also the time we had this wall in the north. Okay. Northern Korea was the hundred means constructed by this time, uh, uh, late 15th century, early 16th. I mean, first half of 16th century. So this. You know, part of this connection here, the, the Great Wall culture, you should set up these things here. So the first, they set up this uh, wall, it's about a four, uh, 70, 
70 leagues, 35 kilometers long. This is the, this is the, uh, okay. This is the Feng, uh, currently Feng Huang city, Feng Huang, Tuojiang Zheng. This is the Nanyang city. This is Tongren, the Guizhou. So this is the, uh, where is this, 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 yeah, that's the Jishou, the present Jishou. So, just between Jishou and the Feng Huang, you have this about a 35 kilometer long uh, earth, uh, earth wall. Okay, the sample, sample this wall. And, uh, um, but this wall did not last uh, very long. Uh, this is uh, 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 1552 or so. And then, at the time of 1605, we have this uh, specific text. Uh, because of the floods and uh, the lack of maintenance, this earth and wall collapsed. So we have this, uh, um, Prefect of Chenzhou. Chenzhou is a. Yeah, this is here. Chenzhou. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the Ming map, actually. This is the show. This is, well, this is the very I mean, good, good, precious text. This is the Ming map. Uh, because the Ming map probably is not that accurate in terms of direction or distance, but I give you the rough idea. So, what they use this is to contain this Miao, this Miao villages in the mountains. Okay, in the mountains, it is a, a suburbs. Um, okay, so in the prefect of Chenzhou, uh, by the early 17th century, he can he could just uh, see some traces of the relics, some of the old wall, and then the wall still occupied this milk defense general's mind. They still want to have this wall. If people, was, you know, come up with this idea: we should restore the wall. We can have the kind of markets to attract, you know, both sides to exchange you know, things instead of having a war. Um, and uh, some other just uh, we should have, have a stone wall. Stone wall lasts longer, all right. Uh, and uh, then uh, eventually you have this uh, person named as Hui Yi. He is responsible for building up, uh, building up this longer wall. This again, you say Tongren, the present Tongren. This is the inside of the Hu Wang. Uh, people say that's the Qing Zhu Guan, presently called the Qing Zhu Guan, Qing Zhu Path. And they go up, then. Okay, from south to north, then from west to east, then from uh, uh, south to north again. This again, this is a Zheng uh, Xisuo. This is the present day Jishou uh, city, Jishou city. Here you have a Qianying. This is the okay here. So this is the Fenghuang, Fenghuang city. So uh, again. Here he says this just the uh, all all side are this uh, their barracks, posts, uh, stations, garrisons, all this kind. This is the main defensive uh, um, facilities. Here there's only one bo uh, box here. It says uh, all the miao in the three provinces uh, they uh, stay here. Okay. So again, this is guarding against the raw miao. Now, this uh, wall, then in the 1620s, they built up a longer wall to, uh, to, uh, to, go, uh, to go up to Xichuying. Uh, uh, and uh, so from here again to here, totally we have 190 uh, kilometers long, 190 kilometers long. Mostly this is made of earth. And then, and then you uh, uh, occasionally you will use this natural landscape as part of barrier, right? So that that's that's the wall. Now the question here, okay. Now in addition to the wall, again as you can see here, these are the the, the, the triangle things show this major um, uh, sentry stations. In okay. uh, yeah, this. Uh, so major, uh, and also we have other barracks surrounding this area. This is a large, uh, there's a large amount. Uh, this is a, uh, an administrative line between Huguang and Guizhou. So the wall, just like uh, the wall in the north, the wall here is not just a, a line wall, but also consists of a different kinds of uh, military facilities. So forming this uh, 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 blockade, now, the, the, this wall serves different purposes for the for the mean. In uh, first of all, 
military, uh, from the military point of view, it's very effective. Uh, uh, since this uh, uh, establishment of this wall, we do not see some major, uh, major military conflicts uh, between uh, between Miao and Han here. Another thing here is that they have the cultural meaning. Uh, as again, it says this is Rao Miao, this is the, uh, this is a uh, uh, Miao. So you, you, you separate them. Uh, you have this uh, uh, ethnocultural uh, meaning in it. And you still um, even get to 19th century, yeah, 18, mid, mid 19th century, when the Qing scholars talk about this place, this you know that by that time the wall is, is uh, collapsed. They still you say this wall really is the demarcation line between the Ming and the Miao. Ming is Han at that time. So it still has a kind of an impact. And also for people's livelihood, it also has a sort of a, a impact. Uh, one example is uh, uh, this is the place that uh, prevents the Miao people from getting this, their uh, necessities for their daily life. Uh, the most important of which is, is salt. salt. Okay. And um, when I visited this place, uh, the Miao people hated this wall. They didn't want to see this wall build up. Because one thing they suffered from their memories from the uh, uh, old, old generations, they said, they could not have this, this salt because it's a wall. So this is a, a one example. And uh, another impact here is the political, political impact. Here, that's the point I want to make further here. That is, a, this is a, an indication of the failure of the mean inward imperialism. Okay. And uh, now, when I use this imperialism here, uh, what do I mean by this? Uh, imperialism, I quote from the dictionary, says is the policy, practice, and advocacy of expanding the power and the domination or dominion of a nation, especially by direct territorial acquisition or gaining indirect control over the political and economic over the political and economic control of other areas. So that's the imperialism. If we use this definition as a, as a meditative we use about the Qing case now, it is a new Qing history, people talk about the imperialism, um, just like the imperialism, the imperialism and the Western imperialism they clash together. You know. I also say you have this mean imperialism here. Now, what do you mean by inward imperialism? The mean imperialism in the usual case, the expansion was outside, and they expand this, uh, this area. Here, however, you have this uh, sporadic uh, holes in the, within the Ming Empire, which do not belong to the Ming political uh, government. So the, what is this, uh, over the, over the you know, 200, you know, a couple of hundred years, the Ming tried to sort of uh, eradicate those foreign <coughs> social political forces to incorporate them into the main domain. That is the process I call this inward imperialism. And this uh, establishing this wall basically shows the main field to accomplish that kind of unification of the of their of the of the land. And they just uh, you know were reluctant uh, I mean reluctantly they just have to just uh, use a piece of wall. To, to contain this foreign land and uh, just uh, try to prevent from their uh, from prevent them from harassing them. Okay. And uh, um, so that's uh, that's the uh, uh, how much time do you have? Ten minutes. I have ten minutes. Oh, that's luxury. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. All right. Now, why, why, uh, why do I say so? Of course, I'm going to show this wall. After I talk about why, I show this wall. Uh, this is the model to restore the uh, part of this uh, southern wood wall. Yeah, the present day, present day phone wall. And uh, oh, this is me and my wife. Um, <laughs> we, we, we traveled this 2005, and that's started my this research project. As a, or as a tourist, so I uh, appreciate my wife's <laughs> inspiration and leadership. Uh, okay, this is restored uh, gate, border, border wall. Uh, so uh, uh, this is the 
uh, some block house and a fortress at this the fortress wall. Oh. Okay. Uh, there's another angle from this of a block house and a another angle of this. This thing from the, from inside. So how it looks like. Uh, two here, two to three stories. Right. Uh, this stuff uh, at the top of this wall, see it restored, part of restored. Uh, the very interesting thing here, they, they put this, you can probably guess what is this. Uh, this is the, what do you call this? This is the board, a uh, stone board of gold chess. Gold chess, you know, black, uh, black and white chess, you know. Uh, and uh, they put this in this, this this there's a facility of the com uh, 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 complex, and we invite this high uh, Korean and also Chinese uh, uh, go chess go ch go masters come here to to play ch chess. <laughs> very very interesting arrangement. But anyway, so we have kind of efforts to revive the local economy and, and, and uh, combine different cultural elements in it. Um, but I appreciate their efforts. Okay, this is say from this, uh, far away from a from a, a loophole. You say the restored the good wall here. You say the uh, a barrack, and then this good wall come here. This restored another piece of this. Okay, so we have this. Uh, this is the part of the canyon. This is the uh, northern end of this wall. This is trading. Okay, so we have other towns. Not just the wall itself, you have other facilities <laughs> going with it. Okay, I'll need my wall. Uh, okay, so this is oh, this is the floor plan of a barrack. Uh, I'll, I'll take this. And you have different uh, gates, three gates here. Uh, this is the Song Tao in, in Guizhou area. So this wall, again, from Qing Zi Guan, go this, and to Xi Chuan. This is the Qing map. Again, by this time, you know, the wall. That the wall and the Qing Dynasty, you have restored about a, a 55 kilometer long stone wall here. But it's, it's not this long. That this is still a Ming, Ming wall. But it had a Ming wall had kind of memory in the Qing, Qing uh, literati. Okay. I said this is the inward, and, and uh, why do I say so? Um, I, I understand uh, Ming, the Ming court claims. This is a, a main part of the main impact. Okay, they claim it claims in different ways. First thing it says, this is under the governance of Aboriginal of offices, Tusi. Mm -hmm. So that's you know because this belongs to Tusi, Baojing, and 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 uh, and Yu Shui. Okay, so uh, and so that's the one claim. And the second claim is that uh, this is uh, he put this in the in the discourse of a uh, border and the interior land, so the Bianjiao and the Neidi. Okay, so. Border and interior land, that's the part of the Ming Empire. The third claim, they put it in this Ming map. So this is the Ming. But I think, you know, uh, I would argue this is a uh, misleading claim. Okay. Several things I, well, I say this is misleading. First, the Ming officials acknowledge you do not have a very effective, or no, even no governance in these places. You have this, uh, people from both. Wuguang, uh, Wuguang area, and also from uh, Tongren, that's the uh, Guizhou area. So this people, you know, um, I don't have time to quote all this, just say, you know, um, the Ming people acknowledge this place that came without nobody's jurisdiction. So this is nobody, meaning, of course, this is not a Ming business, but they have their own jurisdiction, okay? Um, and uh, uh, another, uh, another, uh, uh, Point here is that you have comparison between two, two great walls. So we have the northern, northern great wall against uh, this uh, barbarian from north, and you have the southern great wall. So my point here is both, according to the Ming perception, both walls are used against foreigners. So that's the line between Zhong Guo and 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 the and, 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 um, and, and also between the Ming and uh, and, and uh, the foreign land. And very often, they use this to compare, uh, yeah, they use this wall to compare this wall, and also use the Miao to compare Mongols and the Japanese parents. 
So you have parrots. Okay, so you have that kind of a comparison made uh, associated with this wall. And uh, another thing here is uh, if you look at this map, this is called a Mayan Tu. Mayan Tu is one of the uh, defense, what do you call this? Um, border defense uh, um, garrisons or uh, commands, military commands. And you know, in the in the Ming Dynasty, in the north, you have nine military commands uh, guarding against the uh, barbarians. <coughs> and uh, then, below the Great Wall, you have five military commands guarding other barbarians. Okay, you have a uh, uh, Hao He, uh, Songpan, Jianchang, Qianren, and uh, Ma Yang. So, Ma Yang here is a one of the five below the Great Wall. Why I said this is very special? This is special because there's a, okay, um, several things you can say is special. Okay, oh, this is the, oh, this is the nine, this is nine uh, garrisons from Liaodong to Gansu uh, in the Ming, and this is the five commands of the south of the, of the uh, northern Great Wall. Okay, this is five, five of them. Now, look at the location here. So this is the Hao He, Song Pan, uh, Jian Chang, Ma Yang, and 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 and, and, and Chen Zhen. So the point here is that all this uh, of the five, only Ma Yang is inside the empire. All others, they are outside. In the not outside, just the defending the borders, defending the border. So there are these three defense against Qiang or Tibetans, Western. This. Against not only the internal bandits but also Japanese pirates along the coast. So why this? You have other this kind of a, a border region has bandits problem. They're not understanding this. Only Mayan is this. So my point here is just together like this, the Mayan is getting outside enemies. That 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 is my 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 point. And then I have three reasons. To believe so, and uh, one is that. Okay, all right. So I have three reasons. We can talk about it later if we have time in discussion. All right. So uh, the last point I wanted to make here is uh, you. This is the Ming perception, but at the same time, you have the Miao perception. Miao as their own agency inside this area. They do not identify themselves with the Ming with the Ming regime. Okay. So you have their own deities, okay, as a Panghu or a no god. Okay, they have their own. This is their uh, temple. Okay, very small, very unlike the Han temples. Their own, their own temple. Uh, that's the new temple actually for the uh, heavenly kings. This is the inside this. So they have their own priest. Uh, this is a male priest. He's going to demonstrate. Uh, also, ham priest is going to demonstrate. Okay, there's another ham priest. Uh, they're a meal, a cut master of a, a marital ceremony. Meal songs, meal law, meal customs, beating drum. So, they have, you have your meal agency in identify themselves as a one, as a, as a group. Now, so in conclusion, then. I just want to say a couple of points here. Okay, um, the first point here is uh, um, this is defensible defensive line uh, built uh, uh, against the large and military territory was uh, uh, represented an uh, uh, external borderland. So that's the, the first point. And, uh, and this, uh, uh, this is not uh, the same as the so-called indirect rule under imperialism. Uh, because as I say, when you say indirect rule, that means some kind of nominal governance under the central government. But I would argue this is a, a different, uh, independent, and foreign, foreign, foreign land. And uh, 
Also, the effort of conquering Miao, uh, large and Miao, uh, was one of the missions of the inward imperialism under the Ming. But that, uh, that effort failed. Um, that also will show um, the cultural and the political identity of the Ming dynasty. Thank you very much. Yes, good question. No, no, not a slaves, not a Kauvei labor, not a Kauvei labor. Kauvei labor, you don't get to pay. Uh, the, uh, the official name of the Tafui, he managed to, to get this uh, a government fund uh, to, to hire civilians and soldiers to build this wall. Okay. Yes, they got to pay. Okay, okay, great. Okay. <laughs> So you see a, a, a fundamental change from the beginning of the Ming Dynasty to the end and that this wall represents the Ming backing away from attempting to control? Uh, when you say it's a significant change, you mean uh, in what ways the Ming change? changed? Well, in the, in the beginning, um, there was a desire to control all of these non-Han areas in a relatively direct, in a more direct way. And then by building the wall, there was drawing from that? Okay, uh, thank you. Now, in the beginning, uh, you do have the efforts in the beginning to, to, um, to um, so-called uh, pacify this place and also transform this place. You do have examples like uh, uh, some of this uh, Rao Miao, uh, even uh, probably a couple hundred households of Rao Miao, they surrender to the Ming uh, government and then the Ming government will use this uh, local people, Rao Miao, as their chieftain or their leaders. You do have that of uh, examples in both Guang and Guizhou, but uh, uh, but you do not have uh, uh, very active uh, campaigns or, uh, or or programs to do that because I would say I would th uh, think uh, the Ming has a very limited uh, resources to do it. So when they do this, uh, very often their military uh, expeditions, uh, several major ones, uh, are somehow kind of a reaction. Uh, to uh, to the Miao uh, to the Miao military actions, which also some kind of reaction to the Han migration. So you 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 do have the kind of a text saying you know at this area you have the Kumi Kumi means guest people uh, appeared more and more. So you you know you, they they appear more and more. You you have that kind of a, uh, social economic as well as a cultural tensions. So we have that kind of a conflict. Um, so I would say, you know, it's, it's not just a one side uh, pro pro uh, provocation, but rather it's, it's an interaction and a reaction. So the military uh, uh, expedition is a basically is a, a, a reaction to uh, to the to the Miao uh, revolts or military actions. Eventually, they could not do it anymore. It's, it will be twice it's just the, at first they try different things, um, including you know, the military expedition and, and, and uh, appeasement. And they do have the kind of a, um, sometimes after they conquered one region, and then they, they let the local people again to be this, uh, to be this uh, uh, head of this community and examine their taxation, these kind of things. But uh, after several decades, they revolt again. So you have that kind of a, uh, uh, I think interaction is is a again it's not a, a intentional sort of a, we have this aggressive aggressive policy thing we control. It's a, it's, a, it's a very much contingent. Sure. Um, so you so I, I'd like to invite you to sort of consider the ways that twenty first century scholarship on you know might be um, reproducing some of the exoticizing categories uh, that the main established. So as an example, the way that you set up this talk, you know, um, first establishing this is a place with a difference, and the character given to that difference, you know, wild mountains, <coughs> dangerous water, animals, dangerous animals, people with exotic um, sort of kinship system that you mentioned is illegal, um, cross of marriage. All, all of these seem to be, um, uh, it's possible that these are, I, 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 
like you can consider the possibility of these, these are a kind of reproduction of the, of the exoticizing inside-outside um, uh, categories that, that the Ming also used. Um, and the reason I bring this up is that it, uh, it also, just as the Ming sort of um, uh, uh, imagination of, of the male had, had consequences that you can point out, um, military consequences, all these, these present-day exoticizations also have political and, um, and economic and other kinds of consequences for these people. Uh, this is the comment, right? Pardon? This is the comment. <laughs> Um, this is, uh, this, I guess, this is a comment, yes. Oh, yes. Um, yes. First, I appreciate this comment. Um, and, um, yes, uh, I think you are quite, quite right. Uh, we got to be very much careful about uh, who is saying what, who is imagining what, who is doing what. Um, I, 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 I do uh, realize this, uh, uh, the influence of Han construction of the Miao ethnicity upon the Miao people. So one example would be one example would be um, the uh, the worship of Chiyu. Chiyu um, as this one of the ancient legendary figures, uh, you know, together with Huang Di or Yellow Emperor. He was defeated by the Emperor, the uh, Yellow Emperor. So right now, people worship Chiyu as their an ancestor. They were defeated by the Yellow Emperor, they migrated through the hardship to this area. But then, you know, people would, would tend to think this is the problem very much behind construction. So we should, you know, we'll place the palm the Miao and the Miao acceptance. Because in a sense, in the Ming and the Qing text, we do not say this, this uh, at least we do not say this kind of a, a record about this, uh, I mean, how Miao people I mean, worship this. But we do have this, uh, uh, evidence about this uh, Miao's perception of the Pan Hu, uh, who is the dark head, human body, this kind of a divine figure. Um, so that would be just the, uh, one example of, the, of, of this. Um, and uh, you have many, many other examples, like, you know, including this, uh, this is called, I show you this picture of the Han priest. <coughs> the Han priest is also another example of the high influence upon the Miao community. And the Han priest, you do not see this in other in the in the text. You know, um, when I view, interview them, when did you start this? Nobody knows when they start. But you say they use the high text, high high language, high rituals, high dresses to do to do this. Um, so uh, I will then, uh, of course, I will uh, from now on. I will be more careful. <laughs> I suppose part of the suggestion would be that these categories, Han and Miao, are, are, are also produced by this kind of discourse. So, yes, there's a, maybe a so called Han priest and a, and, a, and a Miao priest, and you say that Miao have all these Miao things, but you know, these are also productions of the kind of, I mean, just as in the Ming text, of the kind of scholarly and other discourses that people use to imagine each other and who, you know, who they might be. Um, and, and these all have consequences. And it, Yes, okay. Uh, I, I agree with you, those categories are, are, are produced, are constructed. Uh, are constructed and produced. And uh, the, 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 what I'm trying to do here is uh, try to understand who produced this and uh, what are produced. And particularly, I try to understand the male agency. And um, that's the. That's, I, I don't, I mean, I don't, I'm sorry to be argumentative. No, 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 no. no, 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 no I, I, I don't know if you did. I mean, I, I find it's true that you mentioned that Miao also have agency, and Miao have Miao stuff, okay? So, and, but you mentioned at the very beginning of your talk that, of course, these folks aren't calling themselves Miao, except in relation to the government category, that, or to the category of Miao that's imposed from the outside. They're calling themselves, you mentioned that there is an indigenous term. There's probably a lot of differentiation also within that community as to what, you know, who, who is what kind of Miao and who has what kinds of relations with other kinds of communities. So, you know, there's a lot going on and that it, it's fine to mention Miao agency, and that's, you know, everybody has their agency. But perhaps it, it might be more interesting to, to actually investigate the actual social relations that are, that are, um, that are producing, what, the, that, that are going on in, inside these communities and, and, and that, are, uh, that are not, 
you know, that are also relating them to, to, to Han and other sort of so-called people, so-called outside of these communities. I mean, it, I, I suppose my comment, and I will, I will shut up after this, is that, is that in some ways it does appear that much scholarship um, on, on Miao and other groups uh, in China does take up in a kind of unreconstructed way categories that are quite old and reimpose them. And that's, that's all I'm going to say. With, without too much, you know, thought given to how these categories are being reposed. All right, I, I'm I'm done misbehaving. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> can you ask a good name, please? <laughs> 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 I ask because I want to that, invite you kind of, later. Yeah, I, I'd love to talk to you. Later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, Joseph, you know this? Just okay. <laughs> okay. So I will ask <laughs> you. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, but, but on a topic like this, it really should have two, two yeah. different voices. Yeah. Because now, Eric, right? Yeah. Yeah. So okay. I, I, I'm just trying to be uh, uh, the devil's advocate here. Because you know, all these categories, you know, are holding. But let me ask you know, you present a lot of main documents. The main, so do you have any historical record from? What we now call the male people that they actually produce in contemporary times of Maine? Do you have any of those questions? Okay, um, uh, uh, a, simple question, a simple answer is, is no. Uh, male people, they, are, they have the oral tradition. They do not have a written language. And um, uh, actually, my, my, field, uh, my field work there is a uh, one of the efforts trying to find their voice uh, because uh, uh, otherwise, it's just, uh, now that's sort of dilemma for for doing this quote unquote historical anthropology or anthropological mm -hmm. history um, is how you you can uh, pinpoint uh, some of the things that are said is it indeed happened 500 years ago. Mm -hmm. So um, so, so the, 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 the 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 method I'm going I'm using here is uh, uh, I'm gonna look at uh, try to you know, talk to them and. If, Look at their lifestyle and the institutions, and at the same time to see if those things we have this record in, in, a, in a written text, either Mandarin or Chinese. Uh, that's a that's the math I consulted with a number of uh, people. You know how to deal with this dilemma, and people they have didn't have a very good good good, good uh, solution. But uh, um, uh, very quick, I think go back to the question here. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. I have a, a question. Are there many natural resources in that area that, looking in the future, you know, it seems the whole world is looking for wealth and money and resources. Uh, it looks like this area okay. may be loaded with it. In terms of natural resources, the first thing here is the forest. The forest. But the forest, they are mostly are gone. Um, you, you see, Yeah, um, you see this place, you know, like this, they have some kind of uh, trees or, or, or bushes or shrubs. Okay, um, but about 30 years ago, you still have very rich forest. And uh, one of my informants says, you know, um, it's still very difficult to travel because of the forest. So 30 years later, they are, they are gone. They just have this kind of left here. Uh, so that's the one thing. Now in terms of minerals or other things, um, I'm, I'm, I'm not uh, quite uh, uh, familiar with this. People do not uh, talk about uh, a lot. The, the, the rich resource here is a, is a tourism right now. People use the cultural resources uh, you know, as a, to develop uh, uh, the, the region. Uh, so, so tourism is a, a cultural resources. Or as the one things. Um, other thing is, uh, is the water. You see this water waterway system. In some, uh, I think there's one one place to build a dam, um, but that's not a, a wise idea. So it's really great uh, that you showed a lot of photographs you took um, during your field trip. So I'm interested in the, the resort walls. Uh, 
um, so you showed us. So I suspect that uh, the restoration was done in, in recent years, right? So I'm wondering, uh, could you talk a little bit about uh, why the government uh, decided to restore the wall? So do we want to attract more tourists? Or I mean, what do local people feel, feel about it? Since you mentioned that the young people, they hate it. Um, so I'm wondering, uh, and then as a field worker there, so uh, what were you taught? Um, yes, I don't know. We are talking to the Miao people. Yes, they hated this wall. Uh, but at the same time, some of the Miao also try to use this as a as a as a uh, way to improve their or earn more money, improve their life style. So uh, I mean, uh, uh, even standard. So the, so we have kind of for the Miao people, we have kind of a very com complex, complicated. Uh, there's a complex problem here. So that, that is one thing. Now, in terms of restoration, um, this has to do with this, uh, uh, this, this so-called economic development in this, uh, this uh, time period in, in this country. And uh, specifically, this happened in 2000. In 2000. So uh, the county officials, they invited a couple of uh, experts from Beijing and to investigate the cultural resources. So what can we open up, what can be used? And uh, so on one day in April, and, uh, these, two, uh, these two experts accompanied by this county officials, they came back from this uh, Feng Huang town. Uh, uh, yeah, just to uh, show you this, this town, uh, Feng Huang Guzheng. Right. And then they passed by this, and they said, oh, there's something like this. Yeah, this is this, uh, a block house. As you know, you can see from the highway down below. This is, you know, he asked, what is this about? He says, this is the, uh, uh, they call this a uh, 10,000 li wall in Miao territory. Miao Jiang Wan Li Qiang. Miao Jiang Wan Li Qiang. He said, uh, the expert, they says, uh, his name is Luo Zhe Wen. He's a, a weird wall a specialist. And he uh, uh, says, oh, what? Miao Jiang Wan Li Qiang. He probably read something about this 50 years ago. Now, you know, 50 years later, you know, somebody uh, talked to him, he said, oh, I need to take a look. So he just come. At that time, you don't have this gate, you know, uh, uh, built yet. He just climbed, you know, climbed this uh, sort of a, a hill and found this. Oh, then he decided this is this the border wall. Uh, he read a few years ago. So, and then this whole country, or the whole country, and then this county is is is, 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 is much very much divided. And, and then it's the prefecture and the province got got very very happy. So that's the so the, the southern Great Wall is sort of a redefinition of a Great Wall in the 2000. So that that's how it, it happened. So then it becomes a a tourist site. It becomes one tourist site for, for economic development. Oh yeah, uh, uh, I'm very happy to talk to you about the uh, legal implications later. But one one thing that strikes me, and, and this is kind of a Mark Evan type question, is. The, you know, because you mentioned uh, you know wild animals, um, and you gave us the snake as an example, and, and I would imagine that this this area, say 100 or 200 years ago, had southern Chinese tigers. And I would imagine uh, that this area also had elephants uh, at some stage. And um, one one of the ideas of Mark Elvin's book about the retreat of the elephants is that you know the, the retreat of the elephants follows. The expansions of, of government encourage agriculture, which has to do with the build up of a military state. So my question is: Have you found any evidence of this state's aversion towards elephants, which are against sort of that live in thriving forests and destroy agriculture? Could there be, be any evidence that these walls are not just a you know cultural or political wall; it's also an ecological wall? Because this, this would be a wall that could prevent elephants from stomping on, on fields <laughs> that the government wants to sponsor and tax, regardless of what ethnicity that might be getting, getting the soil. Do you, you find any evidence of that in the main? Because I don't know when elephants disappeared from this area in the main, but it could be another layer of, of this story that you might want to explore. Right. Uh, uh, a great question here. Uh, I do not find any evidence in the Ming and Qing text. Mm. Probably, if you look at the soil, uh, this area, the earlier text about this area, you know, this is part of the tool, older tool. Yeah. So uh, it's, you can, 
you might have kind of ancient text talk about these elephants here. Uh, uh, even probably in the Song Dynasty, you start to look at more closely about this area uh, and, and, uh, and even Yuan Dynasty. So probably in the earlier text, you might have to find some evidence and also archaeological evidence. Um, like you know, in, in Sichuan, for example, in, in Jinsha area, you have this big you know, elephant trunk or something like that, the big, big thing coming out. Uh, that's the that was that's quite quite early, you know. By the this late time period, we do not have you know have, have evidence. Talk about the legal too. Yeah, we can talk about the legal stuff later. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks for your great talk, and let's um, give Professor Yang a big hand.